Good morning. This is Ms. Billerbeck, and we're going to talk about congruence and similarity today. So two figures are congruent if all corresponding sides are equal and if all corresponding angles are equal. So this is a mathematical way of saying that the corresponding angles are equal. So these two are equal. Then if we have two arcs, those two are corresponding and equal. And three arcs means corresponding and equal. One congruency tick means that that side corresponds to that side and they're equal. Two corresponding um, congruency ticks. So we have two corresponding sides that are equal. Three congruency ticks mean that these two corresponding sides are congruent or equal. Now, what's the difference between congruent or equal? As I've been using them rather interchangeably right now. So um, one thing, we have different signs. So this is the equal sign. And this is the congruency sign. Okay, so to get it, um, to cement a picture of it, think of identical twins. Identical twins, they're congruent. One twin is congruent to the other twin. Their measures, one might like, let's say one might be five foot six and the other one might be five foot six. Then their measures of height are equal, but the object itself, the objects itself, are congruent, okay? But the, the objects are congruent. They can lie on top of each other with matching angles and sides where all the angles are congruent, all the sides are congruent. So one over the other is um, indecipherable. And then when you take it apart, there's two objects. Okay, that would be congruent. Okay, but the measures of this side are equal and the measures of this side are equal and the measures of this side and the angles, corresponding angles are equal. So that's the difference between equal and congruent. Congruent about an object equals about a measurement. So if we look at these two things, so we want to determine are the corresponding angles congruent? So we have one right angle here and one right angle here, and then we have all the corresponding sides. The two sides on each side of this right angle are the um, similar measurements. And the fives are on the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle. So that would make these two triangles um, congruent. Now these two have the same measurements on this. Well, the heights are the same, but this side is much longer than this side. Um, and we have different angles here. So if we were to lay that object on top of this object, we would see a slight difference. So we would see that it would look like this. Okay, so those would not be congruent. Okay, so this object would be right here and there wouldn't be an overlapping that's perfect, like these two objects are perfectly overlapping. You can't tell that there's two objects there until I take them apart. Okay, these two objects, we have a right angle, one which I have forgotten to mark, but that is a right angle right here. Okay, and we have one side that's four, and that's the radius. So that makes this side four as well. 
So in this ca case, this um, arc segment or segment of a circle is congruent to that segment. So these two are congruent. All right, let's look at reflections. So reflections, a reflection is a transformation in which the new figure is the mirror image of the original. An object is transformed to its image. Okay, so if I have one object here, whoops, that's an object. So I have an object and it is transformed. So if I'm going to reflect this object, then that is its image. I guess I should have spelled image on this side so it's not a mirror image, but that is the image right there of this object reflected, okay? Oh, I can do that. There we go. Have to think out of the box sometime. So if this is my object, that's the reflected image, okay? We can reflect it right on the side or we can reflect it farther apart, but it is a reflection. It can be reflected in other ways too, it can at different angles. So those that's an object and that's a reflection. Okay, so if I had a triangle ABC as an object, then triangle A prime, B prime, C prime would be the image. All right, let's take a look at some qualities that happen in a reflection. So the original object and the image are congruent. So we have our original object and our image are congruent, okay, if they're reflected. And they may be reflected in various ways. You could reflect it like that, okay? So the image and the object are congruent. That's important. Okay, any point A and its image A prime are equidistant from the line of reflection. So the line of reflection, if I had this line of reflection and I had two triangles right here, let me, these are two triangles here. Okay, those, um, they're equidistant. So this is A and this is A. This point here is B distance from the, the line of reflection. And this point is B distance from the line of reflection as well. And C is distance C from that line of reflection. And so is C prime. So we have equidistance from the line of reflection. My line of reflection for this one will be right here. So we can see that again, that this, this point here is equidistant from this point here. Okay. So the line of reflection is perpen a perpendicular bisector of the segment joining every point and its image. So if I have this segment here joining the two points of reflection, B and B prime, then it's going to intersect this line of reflection at a right angle. And it's going to perfectly, this line of reflection is going to perfectly bisect, meaning cut in half, equal halves the distance of B to the line of reflection and the distance of B prime to the line of reflection. Okay, so that's what makes a per perpendicular bisector is it's cut in half, which this whole length would be 2B, so B is half of 2B and that's half of 2B. Okay, and it hits at a right angle. So that's what makes a perpendicular bisector. The object and the image orientation are different. The 
Okay, see how this object is a different orientation than this one? This is the object, this is a slightly, this is the object, this is a slightly different orientation. So this is my object, that's a slightly different orientation. Okay, so that's, these are some things to consider. So we have an, a perpendicular bisector coming across here from B to B prime to B prime to B, which would be 2B. So we have B and B. So it's cut in half, intersecting at a right angle, which makes a perpendicular bisector. They're equal distance because that's the definition of a bisector. It's cut in half, so the halves are equal. Um, and the image and object are congruent. It's still the same object. It's just a different orientation. Okay, so the orientation is different. It's a perpendicular bisector and equidistant, which is um, from the line of reflection. Okay, so those, oh, and they're congruent. That's important. All right. Now let's look at a couple examples. Okay, so if we're given AB, the reflection about axis AB is about the axis X. So this is the axis X right here, the X axis right here. Okay, so if I take A, B, C, and these are my coordinates, 3, 3, 10, 1, 8, 7, and I reflect it onto this side, then if you notice B prime is 10, negative 1. So the X value is the same. The Y changes from a positive to a negative. C prime, the X is the same but the Y turns from a positive to a negative. Okay, a, and A prime had the same X, but again, it turns from a positive to a negative. So that um, is what a reflection around the X axis would look like. So it will go from A to negative B. So if B was a negative number, two negatives make it a positive, okay? But a reflection about the y-axis, so if I have A, B, C, look what happens here. So A and A prime, well, now the x is flipping the sign. So if it moves from positive 3, it becomes negative 3, and the y is unchanged. Okay, then we have negative 10, 1 instead of 10, 1. So the x is changed when we move the original object in the image across the y-axis. So we can generalize the rule as negative a, b is a reflection around the y-axis. Okay, let's do some examples. So we want to reflect triangle cat about the y-axis. Okay, so let's first find out what we have. Well, C is right on the origin, zero, zero. Okay, and T is at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three. A is at one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So those are our coordinate points. We always have X first and then the Y. So if we're going to um, reflect around the Y axis, so here's my Y axis. I'm just going to move it over here. So I see that this is two here. So I know my next point's going to be right here because remember they're equidistant about the line of reflection. If I know it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over here, then I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Because again, that's the easiest way to do it. They're equidistant from the line of reflection. Okay, C's right on 
the y-axis, so it is not moving. So now let's draw the line. I would suggest using a straight edge to make it look nice. Okay, so I have, now I'm going to call this a prime, T prime, and this is going to be C prime, even though it's the same point as before. Okay, so we had C prime, A prime, T prime is the pink one. So colored pencils are a really good idea right now. All right, so about the x-axis. So here's my x-axis. So I count one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, this one we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And let me just erase my cat right there because it's in my way. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it should be in the same line as that. So let's go ahead and mark this. We're going to go right to the origin. Okay, and there we have it. So usually I wouldn't call this um, T double prime. I just call it T prime, but I already have a T prime. So T double prime usually means it's been moved twice somehow through a transformation. Okay, but in this case, I'm using T double prime to just call it something different than T prime because I already have one. So this would be A double prime. And then we have C double prime over there. Okay, so I would call this K, C double prime, A double prime, T double prime. And then this one was C prime, A prime, T prime. Okay, so that's how you would call those triangles. Okay, and again, colored pencils are a good idea. But you can see if we, if we move these around, they would just... Um, lie right on top of each other, or actually, if you reflected them back, they'd lie right back on top of each other, okay? So if we had the object, say, right here, and its image about the y-axis, that's how that would look. But if we did the image on the x-axis, it would look like this. Okay, so um, that's just, but they're the same, okay, no matter what. They're just a different orientation. Okay, our last example, it says, reflect PQRS about the x-axis. Okay, well, we know how to do this. We just count if this is, this is my x-axis right here. So if I move this one, two, then Q is right there. If this is one, two, three, then one, two, three, my S prime is right here. If this is one away, then that's going to be one away, R prime. And P's right on it, so it doesn't change. So we'll have P prime right there, too. Okay, so let's draw our new figure. There we have it.
Okay, so this is now the reflection around the x-axis. So that's um, P prime, Q prime, R prime, and S prime. All right, now if we reflect it around the, the y-axis, okay, well, Q's right on the y-axis, so that's going to stay put. So the y-axis is this. So if this is 1, 2, then I'm going to put S double prime right there. Okay, if this is 1, 2, 3, 4 away, I'm going to move this 1, 2, 3, 4 over here. So I have R double prime right there. P is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 would be P double prime. Okay, and again, again Q double prime doesn't change because it's on the line of reflection. Okay, so we're just going to flop this R over here, flop the P, whoops, that's a P, not an R. Wait, that was an R. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I had it right. Okay, so that's the R for the X reflection right here. But my Y reflection, the P moved over here. So I haven't made the new image yet. Okay, so let's go and see what that looks like. So this can be complicated if you're not paying attention. Okay. So take it one step at a time. And when you make the point, label it so you know what it is. Okay, so you can see it looks very different, okay? But that's what it would look like reflected around the y-axis. So the original image is just flipped this way, okay? But on this one about the y-axis, the original image is flipped like that, okay? So the important thing to note on this is invariant points remain unchanged. Okay, and what are they? Well, P was the invariant point. This one was invariant on the x-axis reflection because it was right on it. Okay, Q was invariant for the Y, on the Y axis reflection because it was right on the Y axis. Okay, so that's what makes it invariant, if it's on the axis of reflection. All right, well, that's it for section 6.1, congruence and similarity. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.